Hello, my name is Toby Ho, and in this video, I will introduce you to debugging uh, Ajax calls using Curl and the Chrome network tools. Uh, this is an overview of what will be covered. Um, we'll talk about the HTTP request and response, the Chrome network tools and various features such as filtering, uh, request response details, copying and replaying requests, inspecting errors, XHR breakpoints, and finally, what are we actually doing with these tools? Uh, but before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit about why we're using these tools in the first place. Uh, the first reason is debugging. Uh, debugging probably is the activity that programmers have to spend most of their time on in on a day-to-day -day basis. And this tool, no, knowing how to use these tools well, uh, effectively will help you cut down on the amount of time you need to spend on debugging. Uh, another reason why you might want to use these tools is to do performance tuning. If it feels like your app is getting slow, getting bogged down, um, knowing how knowing your way around uh, the Chrome network tools will help you get, uh, get some clues about why that's happening. So let's get started. Um, the first thing I want to cover is the HTTP request and response. I want to show you what that actually looks like. So a very handy tool um, is curl, which is a command line tool you can use to issue an HTTP request. So I'm going to send a, a request to this URL, HTTP colon slash slash chat dot is. The dash V flags will give me extra information. So if I issue this command, I will get this output. There's a little bit of the request response body that's been omitted for brevity over here. So the first part here, that's the request. That's information that's getting sent out that which asks the server for specific information. This blue part, the next part that's printed on the terminal is the response that the server sends back to the client. And it includes this sort of header and a response body. Take a look at both the request and response in a bit more detail. First, starting with the request. So the request looks like this. Um, it, it starts off with an HTTP method, which can be get or put or post. This particle one uses get. The next part is the path, um, aka the URI. A path is the unique identifier to the resource that you're trying to retrieve. In this case, is the root path, which is just a slash. The third thing is the HTTP version. And currently, almost everybody uses version 1.1. The next part of their HTTP request is a set of headers. And headers are just a bunch of key value pairs. Um, there's, so each line is a key value pair. It's sort of like an entry in a dictionary. Uh, there's a colon, and the thing to the left of the colon is the key, and the thing to the right of the colon is a value. So these headers compose extra metadata about this request. And different agents will send in different headers and values for those headers. After those headers is a blank line. A blank line signals to the server that this is the end of the request. Now let's look at the response in more detail. So this is the response. Uh, and the response, like the request, the response also starts off with a beginning line. Um, and the beginning line starts off with the HTTP version number. And then it re returns a status code and a message. This, in this case, it's the status 200 with a message of OK. Let's look at status code in a little bit more detail. If you want to learn more about all the different status codes there are, you can Google for HTTP status codes. There are five major categories of status codes. Uh, each one just three-digit number. In general, um, the most commonly used uh, status codes are in the 200 and 400 and 500 ranges. So 
response codes in the 200 ranges means the response was successful. Usually you'll see the 200 stats code being used. Um, in the case of there being an error, a, a status code in the 400 range means that the request was bad, uh, meaning it was your fault. It was the requester's fault. Uh, some more specific ones are 401, which means unauthorized. You're not authorized to use this resource. Or 403 means forbidden, which is usually means you're logged in, but you're not allowed to use this resource. And 404 is a common one that means this resource does not exist. 500, uh, a status code in the 500 range means there was an error and the error was on the server side. So it was not the fault of the requester, but most likely a fault of the implementation of the program in the server side. Uh, 500 is a generic internal server error. So uh, just like the request, the response also has a bunch of headers and the headers are also these uh, key value pairs like that. And then also just like the request, there's a blank line following all the headers. And then after the blank line, there is usually a response body. Uh, in this case, the response body was an HTML page or, or the content of an HTML page. Um, there's more to this HTML, but I've omitted the rest of the content for brevity here. Um, all responses will come with a content type header, which tells you what type the response body is of. So in this case, the type of the response is text slash HTML. Uh, some other types of, and this is called the MIME type. Uh, some other kinds of MIME type are that are commonly used, uh, text slash CSS, text slash JavaScript, application slash JSON. Uh, and JSON will be commonly used in uh, AJAX enabled web application. Okay, now you try. Take some URL that you know and curl it using the curl command. Uh, take a look at what requests went out and what response came back. Study the request lines, the headers, and the response body. Uh, please actually pause the video and go do that and then come back. Now I'm going to move on to uh, the Chrome DevTools network panel. So I'm gonna use this uh, Wikipedia homepage as an example. So if you bring up your Chrome DevTools, the one we wanna focus on today is the network tab. To get more real estate, I would close the console if you have this extra console sort of dividing at the bottom. So you get just the network console tab. There's a little sort of red recording button, VCR recording button. If it's red, that means it is currently recording all network requests that are being issued to a server anywhere from this web page. And if you see this text that says it's recording network activity, but there's currently no network activity that's being seen, that means there has been no requests recorded so far. Um, you could do one of two things. You could do something on the page that induces a new request to be issued, or alternatively, you can reload or refresh the entire page. That will cause it to record all the requests that are issued as a result of loading this page. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I have just reloaded this page. And as a result of that, I got seven requests. And those seven requests are listed here. Um, some of these are um, HTML. So you can see various information about every single request. There's the request method. Uh, in this case, all of these requests are get methods. There's the status, all of them were 200, which if you remember 200 means everything went okay. Uh, there is the type of the response. We have one, two, three, four, four PNG files and two script files. 
and that's all that's required to load this page and you also see an initiator initiator tells you what is the thing that triggered this request to be sent the size of the response body and the time it took for the server to respond to this request um, in addition to that information there's also something called the waterfall graph and the waterfall graph is a particularly interesting if you're if you're interested in uh, improving the performance of the load time of your page for every request it'll give you this little it's sort of like a little gantt chart yeah i think a gantt chart would be a good characterization of what this visual is um this is the beginning so for so i'm looking at the first request for example that loads the html code for this page um this there's a bar here and the beginning of the bar this is like a timeline this is time zero starting here and this is time 100 milliseconds this is time 200 milliseconds this is time 300 milliseconds and at around time zero we have initiated this request for the html code and then it goes through various phases and then finally at a little less than 200 milliseconds all of the html code has been returned and then we are here for the the first png file the request for the first png file we're initiating the request at here which is a little less than 200 maybe like 175 milliseconds and then the data comes back at a, a little more than 200 milliseconds and then we have more requests after that and this these are the gantt charts for those we can drill down to the gantt chart for each request so if and if you hover over one of them you'll get more detailed information so right now i have hovered over this the request for this uh, HTML document here. And it tells me that um, it, it color code the, the various parts of the Gantt chart, which is great. So it says white, this little white piece, meaning it's queuing. So that means the browser is still waiting to start the request. So in fact, when, when it's in the white phase, the browser hasn't even sent over a network request yet. Um, it stalled for a little minute um, that has to do with the queuing and then when it does a dns lookup that means it's doing a dns lookup just to figure out the ip address of the server it has to ask and then once it has done that it needs to go to that ip address and do an initial handshake with a wikipedia.org server and then since this is a https it's a secure connection it has to do a ssl handshake which takes some additional time so that's the purple bit and then finally once all of that is done it is able to start sending over the request the green part means it's waiting for the server to come back with a response and that waiting just has to do with the internet latency here and then the blue part is it actually getting data back and downloading the data and since all of these re requests are back to the same uh, same server, uh, the, the host name is www.wikipedia.org for all of these requests. It doesn't have to do another initial handshake and that deal for the remaining requests. So all it has to do is send over a request and get the content back. Um, at the top over here, sometimes you may see this visual snapshot. It, it is basically telling you, you what the page looked like at that point in time of loading the page. Uh, and you can, if you don't care to look at these visual snapshots, you can toggle that off by clicking on this little um, video camera icon here. Okay, now you try. Uh, uh, pause this video and I would like you to open up a website of your choice open up the network tab, reload it, and then look at all the requests that were issued in order to load this page and examine the waterfall graph.